Thanks for tuning in to the Diecast Museum, and today I am looking at some green light stuff with you. This is the newest from Green Light as far as the blue collar collection, and I have got four out of the six, the very best four. I've also got an exclusive Cobra that we're going to look at. Most importantly, though, this is the latest stuff Hollywood Series 30. Let's see what Green Light has packed in here. I haven't actually taken the cars out of this case yet, just opened it up. So let's see what comes out first. Castle. Uh, that's a television show featuring, uh, for this car, 2006 Dodge Charger. That is looking very good with the NYPD livery on it. Good looking car. Now, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about the television shows. If they speak to you, well, then there's all the more reason to collect them. I collect these vehicles because they are so cool. The, key, the vehicles themselves. And I really like to take them all out of their packaging, put them in my diorama, even play with them a little bit on the racetrack sometimes. They don't really last all that well. But there's MASH, the MASH Jeep, probably one of the better looking Jeeps I've seen from any of the manufacturers. So now that I've got two of them, I'm going to open one of those up for you. 1970 Chevrolet Chevelle SS. Now that's a fairly standard repetitive casting we've seen before, so it's not going to be one of my big favorites out of this case. It is a cool car though. Once Upon a Time, I don't know anything about that show. Greenlight's got some interesting television shows they seek these cars from, but you know what? That's why they have such interesting cars, because they don't mind digging into some of the more obscure shows. X-Files certainly was not one of those shows, very well known, even a movie or two, I think. And I grew up watching the X-Files, really enjoyed it. It's a little dated now, but still quite enjoyable to watch. Anyways, moving right along. Um, we've got now three of those, so we're definitely going to open up a couple of those. The Rookie 2008 Ford Crown Victoria. Look at all those rookies. Now, this is another heavily re-released casting from Greenlight, much like the uh, Chevrolet Chevelle. So, not really necessary for my collection, but it's a nice, uh, nice decoration on it. Fairly simplistic. Everyone likes the police cars. Now, this one is definitely right up my alley. I like the uh, just the standard, normal civilian paint job of these cars, often used as police cars or taxis back in 1977. The Plymouth Fury. Now, I know I do have many police and taxi versions of this green light casting. This is going to be one of only a handful of just regular painted versions of this car. From the movie Christine, I don't remember where that car was in there. It was probably just in some fleeting little scene, but it's so cool that they are able to find these cars in the movie and bring them to us in 164 scale. So that's all of the uh, that's all the Hollywood Series 30 right there. And we'll just take a quick gander at everything else you're going to see in this video, all getting opened up. The 1980 Ford Mustang Cobra. This is what Greenlight calls an exclusive. These are quite often available at your local hobby stores. The uh, hobby retailers know to be able to order these. And they can do so usually for the same price as anything else, so or near near about. Nice looking, uh, nice looking casting. It's going to look really good with that black and green. Get it out with the packaging. Blue collar. This was released maybe a month ago or so. It's probably start of 2021. Series eight. Uh, very very popular vehicle here. I was so lucky to find these uh, at my local Walmart, so paid very little for them. 1992 Ford Bronco XLT with removable cap, spare tire. Uh, there's six vehicles in this set. I think I opted out on some of the more standard ones like the Volkswagen bus. I don't need any more of those. But some of them I always need more of, like this 1981 Chevrolet C20 Custom. Very nice looking truck. Of course, we're going to look at these all very close up, close detail once we get them out of the packaging. This is just the overview. Here is a really nice looking 1979 Ford F-150. Love the color combo on this. This looks so authentic and realistic from back in the day. And uh, I hope I got a couple of those. I think I do, so definitely going to open up those using my diorama. Here's an interesting little 70 Jeep Jeepster Commando pickup. Fairly cool little vehicle. And that's it for the, uh, the Hollywood series vehicles I have. So I am missing. And... Uh, I had these just kind of kicking around. Didn't get the full set. Again, got these at my local Walmart. Didn't want to spend too much on these, but they're they're nice cars. Lots of station wagons. If you like station wagons, uh, you might like these ones. The Pontiac Le Mans is probably my favorite in the lot, followed closely by those Oldsmobile Vista Cruisers. 
but I am getting quite a horde of all those cars in various paint jobs. So let's get these things all opened up for you. I'm going to do that off camera because, as I said, the snippy snippy sounds are a little scratchy. I did find that uh, GMC Vanjura van that I was hoping I had in my collection. So thankfully that is here. Let's look at that awesome van. I'm really just going to get everything out, put it on the parking lot, and then we're going to go in for a closer look. Clarification, this van did not come in the Hollywood Series 30. This is a, uh, I guess, a separate single pack exclusive um potentially it was released in a previous hollywood series probably just a re-release greenlight often does that so for their popular models they uh, they'll often make a dusty version dirty version or a clean version or basically just a re-release of it uh, as time goes on so that's perfectly fine with me uh just getting through these i'm going to go through them in the order i'm guessing maybe most of my fans or viewers would like to see and I'm sure a lot of you guys want to see this little Mustang. These are quite popular. So opening hood on this model. Uh, I am going to give all of these cars a little bit of a buff and shine. I'm going to correct any sloppy tires that I find on them. Before I go in for the close review, I really want these things to look as nice as they do when I'm done uh, reviewing them with you guys, which isn't always the case as they come out of the packaging. Sometimes they've got a few little faults and problems. Uh, it's been a while since I made a Greenlight review video. Haven't done one in this year, so we're kicking off 2021. This is the first Greenlight video review video and that I'm going to do with you guys. Get that little bumper off. Care if I don't rip a back bumper off or elastic doesn't get caught on that back bumper. Uh, there's that removable cap. Wow, this is a huge improvement on this cap for this truck. We'll definitely have a closer look at that in a moment. But just amazing castings. I have to reiterate that Greenlight is really one of my favorite 164 scale brands to collect. One, it's affordable, which is nice. And two, look at the selection of vehicles that we have here. For someone that lives in North America or has a lot of North American vehicles on the roads, potentially typical, typical North American type vehicles. Got to be careful with these elastics here. Um, it's awesome to have such nice authentic looking versions of them for your for your collection so we're gonna get all of these out here this is another hit i'm sure of it this is gonna be a hit and really cool that there's some lifted suspension versions as well so if you're like me sometimes you'll buy a couple of these and take your uh take them apart drill out the rivets switch out the bases uh this one does not have an opening hood it is a separate hood piece it looks like a, an opening hood but it isn't uh, the Jeep Jeepster, well, that's probably not a huge fan favorite, but since we're in the blue collars, we'll get that one out. Yet another elastic band to deal with. Ah, going to do, if we've got that many elastics, we're going to have to deal with those off camera. Let's go over to, oh, I've been waiting to open this one with you guys. My first 80s LTD in my collection. I, well, I have some from Matchbox way back in the day. Um, but this is just a fantastic casting. I think Greenlight's done a huge improvement on this. If it's at all like the Mercury Maquis, or if they had any shared parts, they've done a huge improvement with the windows. I actually passed on the Mercury Maquis that came out uh, simply because it had some quality issues, let's say. But this car certainly does not appear to have any that I can see so far, but we'll go in for a closer look and really analyze these cars. Uh, already, I'm, I'm, a fa I'm a fan of this one. No opening hood. No big deal. Which one do you want to see next? How about this one? The Plymouth Fury. Now, for most people, this car might just be kind of mundane and boring. But for me, I love it. And what an awesome paint job on it. It's got like a pearl, pearlescent metallic blue. These are heavy cars. I can tell you right now, the wheels aren't the proper distance apart. They're way too far, like way too wide. Axles are too long. That's an easy, uh, easy fix for the home um, enthusiast hobbyist whatever you want to call yourself pretty easy to switch out axles and wheels on cars to get that more desired look stance or width of wheels if you so choose this car seems to have it pretty good so uh, again you can see there's a little bit of grease on the roof but man do those paint jobs ever shine when you uh, give them a little buff with a micro fleece fiber rag whatever you want to call it nice details on the engine there Less and less we're seeing opening uh, parts on Greenlight models as time goes on, though. 
sign of the times is you know keeping price points in line as material costs go up and well you would think it would go down with the amount of production that Greenlight's into here so likely it's more of a cost cutting measure than anything uh, i'm sure Greenlight's doing well they're selling hordes of these things nowadays so and i obviously they're they're good quality models with or without opening parts it is a shame though for some of us that uh, like those opening parts to be honest, in a lot of cases, though, the opening parts don't really add a lot of value to them because a lot of people don't open up their collectibles, first of all, so you'll never even see the engine in the first place if you're a non-opener. Second of all, they're so hard to open, you take your uh, your life in your hands with a small razor blade sometimes to get the, uh, the, the hood open on these cars. And in other cases, once the hood is opened, it doesn't open all the way. So you still can't enjoy the uh, the engine very well. But that's those are the anomalies. Overall, I've been quite pleased with the opening parts from all of the manufacturers, including even M2. Uh, some people don't like the M2 parts. But this, I've noticed Greenlight is really ramping up quality, I would say, so far. I mean, we've taken out quite a few models. I have not seen any glaring issues with any of these models. So maybe, uh, maybe they're finally listening to their... To their fans in that they may be actually doing a little bit more quality control with the tires which was one of the biggest problems misshaped uh, tires or bent wheels and also the details um, no broken parts so far so we've got a very intricate very intricate parts on these little mash jeeps and uh, I think they've turned out quite nice I mean we've got little drive shafts and everything so Let's go in for a really close look at the details on these vehicles. I'm going to start with this F-150 because, first of all, I have to make a correction already. We have not seen the box cap for this truck previously, although this casting has been out for a while. This is the first time we've got a box cap for it. So they've done a really nice job with that, as you can see. Um, nice paint job on this truck. Really, really good details. Really no flaws other than just the typical problem that we often see with the white wall striping on all green light tires is that they really have trouble getting those white walls centered uh, in the black tire themselves. Now that's a problem that for, you know, for some people might bother you, especially if you're an in-package non-opener collector, because if you get ones that are really askew, it can really kind of detract from the model. But what I do is I just peel those ugly little white wall tires off and I just flip them around, which gives it a kind of a more, well, let's just see if we can get them on there quickly. But it gives it a bit more of a current look to the vehicle, kind of like present day. You got an old pickup truck. Chances are you don't have white wall tires on your old pickup truck unless you're really looking to maintain its original appearance, which most pickup truck drivers typically don't. I think it's more of a utilitarian vehicle so as you can see it's pretty easy to jam those tires on obviously i'm not doing the uh, most delicate job of installing them right now on the camera but it goes to show you what's what's possible so truck looks pretty good with the white walls on the inside and versus on the outside to me looks just as good actually so let me know what you guys think in the comments. Is this something that you guys typically do with your models as well? If you're an opener, that is. And also, how much does it bother you? Because I suspect that's probably a fairly difficult thing for Greenlight to get dialed in. Some of their tires you get lucky with, but as you can see, most of them just, they don't look good with the white walls on there, such as on this little Jeep Jeepster. They're pretty much all completely misshapen. It's not actually the tires that are misshapen. As you can see, this is a, Good rolling little vehicle. And all of these vehicles I've I've tested are fairly decent at rolling. There are a few misshapen tires. The worst tires are on this 81 Chevy. I don't know why they had so much difficulty given that these tires don't even have any details, hardly at all. These ones actually are odd shapes, very oblong tires. So this this truck's got quite a wobble. I mean it rolls, but they could have done better. There's two tires on this model that are acceptable, I would say. But six out of eight tires for this truck, unacceptable in my opinion. Pretty much throw them in a frying pan and probably you'd be better off. But as you can see, it's got a removable uh, tonneau cover, which is pretty cool. 
The Jeeps, well, we looked at those. No complaints on the Jeeps, really, just crooked seats, but that's a pretty easy fix, too. A uh, couple of crooked tires, but these tires are, you could heat these up and flatten them out a little bit if that really bothered you. They're really not that bad. Nice looking Jeep, very good scale. Nicely detailed little shovels and uh, all that other stuff on there that really makes this little tiny model stand apart from other little Jeeps that I've seen. The A-Team van, the mud looks good. It looks pretty good. Uh, it's kind of splooshed onto one side of the hood and not the other here, but that could have easily happened by hitting a puddle on the right side of the vehicle. Um, I mean, they could have done a little bit more with the mud, but it's nice because the van's got dusting. It's got that dusting look on it as well. So here are the previous models that have been released in my collection anyways. Um, here's the first version, just a clean version of the same van pretty well. Not sure you're going to see a whole lot of differences really. But nice to have a clean version of course. And then we've got the uh, chromey exclusive version. This came out quite a while ago. I think a couple years ago now. But... Uh, I'm not sure that these were a huge hot seller either, though. They're To me, they look pretty cool. So those vans aside, as you can see, nice, nice rolling wheels on that one. Uh, the Ford Bronco looks good with or without the back cap. Spare tires, got the cover on it, so it's not a real rubber tire. Nice details. Good, uh, good mag wheels. And, uh, you know, you could put bigger tires on these, too, if you wanted to. There's definitely some room in there if you're finding them a little lackluster for your off-road needs. But uh, this looks to be like a street version of the vehicle. It's fairly clean. I mean, this is the one gripe I have for this is that the cap, you can't really do anything with this other than sit it on a shelf and leave it there. Without the elastic band, that thing's not staying on there. So, uh, again, getting back to why this this cap cover really works for me. It's got a it's got locking in all the way around, whereas this thing's just got none of that. So I would suggest for what little it would cost, green light, go back to the drawing board and just try to make a new one of that for the, any vehicle that has that problem. Uh, the Jeep Jeepster doesn't have that problem. It does have a nice uh, rubber spare tire in the Jeep Jeepster, which is a nice touch. So what have we got to look at next? Uh, let's look at that exclusive Cobra because I'm sure some of you guys are dying to see that. These are pretty nice little models. They really did a good job with this one. The cast mirrors with the uh, paint details on it to actually make them look like they could be reflective. Lots of good badging on the car. Some of it's so intricate and small, you really have to zoom in to see it. The hood closes nicely. And uh, just a good little car. So there's the older casting. You can see kind of a sloppy hood design, these older castings. I mean, I'm, I am I have a fondness for them because I've been collecting Greenlight for a long time. But you can see uh, it does leave a little bit to be uh, finished, I would say. And probably going to see these types of models retire at some point in their lineup as more Greenlight models are produced. Uh, we're going to go over to the big old Plymouth Fury. The only thing I've noted as a problem really here is the uh, continuing of the way too high trim arch around the windows it just goes way too high up on the roof line and this is something that many many uh, other video reviewers i've noted on youtube have have made note of maybe just green light has just stopped paying attention to some of these little problems but it would be nice if they could get that down a little bit um the wheels are too wide on this car so the axles are inappropriate the only other gripe for some might be that the plastic front clip is a different color than the uh, pearlescent metallic blue of the metal bodywork. To me, I find that actually an authentic variation. Kind of gives the car an aged, weathered look because often in real life, the front clips were made of plastic on these old cars. Maybe not this car in particular, but on my Pontiac Bonneville from the 80s, it was discolored too. So that, that happens over time with these cars. You can see the same situation with the uh, X-Files Ford LTD. It's got a slightly paler plastic front clip but this is how Greenlight offers so many nice model year, model year uh, variations, year to year variations. They can just change that whole front clip. Really much like the cars were assembled in real life. So again, a fairly wide axle stance on these cars. I'm not really sure why they can't figure just to trim. They make, they make a new casting, make the chassis a little narrower, get these wheels in set in the car a little bit better. 
This is not how these cars rode. I can tell you that from experience. These tires are tucked in under the fenders. Otherwise, all these cars would have had mud splashed all the way up over the window in every scene you'd ever see them in. So, just not realistic. But, hey, they're 164 scale. They're $7 each. How much are we going to complain, really? I don't want to complain too much because I really do like green light models. I just, there's always room for improvement, and you'd think uh, it wouldn't be too hard to do. The Union 76 van, Chevy van, great. This one's got a painted base, which is nice. Uh, a lot of the car castings don't have a painted base, and these will tarnish over time once you've opened them. I don't care. I mean, that's I've seen that with Hot Wheels. I've been collecting Hot Wheels forever. That's just a normal fact of life. Uh, other than that, it's actually good to get the cars out of the package and wipe off that excess machining oil that is often slicked all over the paint and the elastic bands that cut into the, the tampo work. Those are all bad. You kind of want to get those off of the models if you're really interested in the model, not just the... Uh, plastic that enshrouds it to get it from china to you intact uh, i'm going to show the trim variation here and also something else that's kind of bothersome here well just i just realized well one i've realized this car is missing its steering wheel <laughs> this is from i think the first station wagons release these two cars and i've just realized i don't have a steering wheel in there maybe uh no steering wheel. So that's that's something I just observed, pulling those off my shelf. Where things really get interesting is this silver trim line that Greenlight has applied to the hood of the Pontiac Le Mans. Which, correct me if I'm wrong, this model year of car did not have that feature as they correctly distinguished with their previous releases of this. Uh, this, I think, is a mistake. I, I don't believe that Pontiac started using that center chrome trim piece until late 70s, maybe 78, 79. We've got a few left to scrutinize here. Um, this car is actually quite a nice model. I really like the 2006 Charger. These wheels are, you know, these are a bit more in line. There's a bit of slop in the axles, but you can set this car down. It looks pretty good. The hood does open, I think. Again, these, yeah, it does. There's really not much to write home about under there, though. Pretty basic stuff. Uh, looking like we got a little bit of fingerprint still on the windshield so we can get some of that off but oftentimes there is thumbprints on the inside of the windows and as you can see you might be able to squeeze a q-tip in there maybe knock your steering wheel off in the process of cleaning it but ah, sometimes you just got to live with some of the little things the little inconsistencies black polished uh, paint jobs are risky with green light cars you often see these scuffs on the hood that really just occur in freight i'm sure they didn't come out of the factory like that but just chafing away in the plastic traveling thousands of kilometers to my doorstep does take a toll on the cars and that's why there is a machine oil glaze on these cars i often have to wipe off upon opening otherwise they're kind of murky and greasy uh, this one's an older casting you can see it's got the big fat tires on it so that's i still like this casting quite a bit it's a good solid performer never had any issues with it um yeah so same with this car and I think that's rounding out pretty much all of the uh, cars I had to show you today. I certainly hope I haven't missed anything. Highlights for me, definitely this Ford. Uh, the Bronco. Number one, I have to say, well, these two are pretty high up there for me. This one's great, but I mean, I've got a couple of them now. And nice to see the Pontiac back. Nice to see this car still making an appearance here and there. Uh, the Mustang's obviously great. And, of course, 18 vans. You can, never, you can never go without an 18 van in your collection. The Jeep was really good. Which one of these was your favorite, guys? I do appreciate the comments. Like, subscribe, and share if you're so inclined. More videos to come. Uh, smattering of videos. We've got Green Light, Auto World, M2, Hot Wheels. Lots of Hot Wheels. And lots more Green Light. So stick around. And happy hunting. Take care, everyone.